talk amongst yourselves. There we go. Does this one work all right? There we go. Good morning, everybody. Thank you all for coming and joining us here today for this time of worship. We have had a good weekend here at our church with an excellent that mission effort, and Rebecca will be telling us more about that in just a few minutes. But we are glad that you are here, and we are glad to be able to gather together and be the church, to be the people of God. We've gathered here to worship, and that's always a gift. If this is your first time here, welcome. Let us know that you are here so that we can give you a proper welcome to our church. Also, if you are joining us via live stream, go to the address you see on the screen and let us know that you have joined us. We will look forward to being in touch with you and giving you a welcome to our church and thanking you for being with us. But wherever you are and however you are joining us, we are glad that you are here. We have a guest band here today, Christy and company, all of her group that's up here. We're looking forward to them leading. They've led all weekend in this mission event that we have had. And so we are looking forward to them leading us in worship today. And as we gather here, we are also looking forward to meeting the Holy Spirit and letting that Spirit fill our hearts and our lives as we gather. Let's join our hearts together in prayer. Lord, I thank you for this day, and I ask you to, to bless all of us as we gather here. Remind all of us, O oh Lord, that this is about you and not us, that we have come here because we are lifting our hearts in faith to you, and we are expecting to experience something from you, but we are also bringing something to you, Lord, and that is our faith and our love. Help us, O oh Lord, to focus our hearts and our minds upon you, and to experience the best of what it means to be your people. We pray, O oh God, that you will experience the best of what we have to offer you as well. Let every word that's spoken here today, <clears throat> every song that's sung, every prayer that's prayed, be something that will glorify you and will draw attention to you. Hear our prayer as we gather here today, O oh Lord, for it is in your name we offer it. Amen. All right, we're going to start off this morning. Let's stand together as one body of, of the church that we love him. We're going to sing about uh, just the passion and the love and the sacrifice of what he did for us on the cross. Oh 
worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. darkness my God that is who you are you are here touching every heart I worship you I worship you you are here healing every heart I worship you Turning lights around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending every heart. I worship you. I worship you. You are waymaker, miracle worker. Okay. 
ready to be filled with your love and your joy and your peace. We want to know you more. We want to represent you more in our communities, God. We surrender all. We shed any baggage we came in here with. Lord, take it away. It's gone. That is all distractions gone, Lord. We're here to learn about you, to praise you, to give glory to you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. and get up on the stage. I'm like struggle bussing to get up here, so just a second. Thank you, um, Christy, and your band members and all your friends. You guys are incredible and amazing, and we just appreciate um, that you came and you were willing to share this weekend with us and willing to um, lead us in worship. I am going to be talking to you to this morning about some things that happened this past weekend, which was Mission Madness, um, and so it's going to be a continuation of what we've been learning um, this past weekend. So have you ever snoozed through an alarm? I'm talking completely snoozed to the point of missing something really important, like a shift for work, maybe a wedding, school or an urgent appointment. And when you do finally manage to get awake, whether it's due to someone calling you or physically coming in and shaking you awake, you realize what has just happened, that you missed that important thing. And so you start to feel a little bit of panic and almost a little stunned, and you just start to simply freak out. 
You jump out of bed, you throw off whatever's closest to, you throw on whatever's closest to you, running around through your house, trying to grab everything that you could possibly need. Cell phone, check. Apple Watch, check. Wallet, check. Keys, check. Mask, check. And you rush to get into your car feeling completely unprepared, praying you get all green lights on the way there. And when you finally arrive to your meeting, that's when it finally starts to sink in. Your outfit really isn't too great. Maybe you forgot to brush your teeth or even worse, your hair. And so not only are you late for this appointment, but you're also feeling super gross, unprepared, and really insecure. There is nothing worse than oversleeping for something that's really important. Isn't it crazy how even in these moments we make choices to prioritize our cell phone, our wallet, our watches over things that are really important like appropriate clothing, the necessary hygiene skills, or have I even eaten breakfast? A lot of times we may find that we're doing this spiritually as well, that we prioritize things that we think are far more important over things that truly are important. We busy ourselves with the task in front of us or we're just trying to get through our days successfully, being a good human. Or maybe we pack our schedules with meetings, Bible studies, and activities to the point that we are truly missing out on encountering God because we are so distracted by all that's going on within our lives. And so this morning our scripture text is going to come from Romans 13, verses 11 through 12. You know what sort of times we live in, and so you should live properly. It is time to wake up. You know that the day when we will be saved is nearer nearer now than when we first put our faith in the Lord. Night is almost over, and the day will soon appear. We must stop behaving as people do in the dark and be ready to live in the light. And some versions of that scripture says, so let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on our armor of light. This weekend, we had the opportunity to host a Mission Madness site here at Blacksburg Baptist. It was a weekend that was filled with worship, service, and community. We have spent the weekend talking about what it means to follow Jesus. We discussed that what it means to encounter Jesus in such a way that we are literally awakened to a new way of life. We heard the story of Simon Peter found in Luke chapter 5. Peter has this encounter with Jesus that's so radical, so profound, that he and his friends abandon absolutely everything just to follow him. They went from being ordinary fishermen to the very first disciples of Christ. Their lives have been awakened by the Holy Spirit, and their lives were transformed through one encounter with Jesus Christ. We also took a look at a story, the story of Levi, the tax collector, and how scripture records that Jesus went out of his way just to find Levi. Levi's industry was often used and abused and corrupt, and it included relationships with the Roman oppressors. These factors, plus the fact that the tax collectors were notorious for stealing people's money for their own wealth, made them the targets of contempt and ridicule from the people. Levi was a social outcast, rejected, hated, and considered both corrupt and evil, and yet we find a story where Jesus goes out of his way to ensure that Levi has an encounter with him, an encounter that would transform his life and awaken him to the spiritual things that were going on around him. It's within these two stories that we see two men who are just simply going through their mundane, everyday task, and they find themselves standing face to face with Jesus Christ, God in flesh. It's through these encounters that their lives become awakened to new life, that these men had an opportunity to wake up and follow Christ. They could have easily continued to hit snooze on their spiritual lives, continue to be caught, busy catching fish, or Levi, in Levi's case, continue to be a selfish and greedy thief in order to advance himself forward within the world. But both chose to wake up spiritually and follow Christ. They threw off their old deeds, their old ways of life, and they replaced it with this armor of light. A third story we visited this weekend was the story of Mary and Martha, also found in Luke. In this passage, we have two women. One, Martha, who is busy hosting a feast, taking care of the home, and making sure her guests are attended to. 
And then we also have Mary, who is sitting at the feet of Jesus among the men listening to the teachings of Christ. Martha was doing the things that she needed to be doing. In fact, what Martha was doing was considered ministry. And the Greek word is the same one used in Acts when they describe Stephen's ministry as a deacon. But within this passage of scripture, we see Jesus categorize what, has, what she has been doing as secondary to what, Mar- what Mary had been doing. And he furthers his point by saying, Martha, you look worried. You look distracted. But only one thing is important today, and Mary has chosen the good thing. Martha knew who Jesus was. She had already encountered Christ, and she already believed in who Christ was. She was doing what the societal roles of her time told her she should be doing. She was cooking and cleaning and taking care of her guests. She was fulfilling her ministerial role at that time, but yet Jesus places this secondary to what Mary was doing. Martha had missed it. She had missed the alarm in that moment. She had missed what Jesus was trying to do. She had missed the voice of God. She was so distracted by performing her ministerial duties, hosting the meal, and she just missed it. And now she was left feeling a bit out of place, insecure, anxious, worried, a tad bit jealous. But what she was doing was important, right? but not most important. No, scripture records that what was most important was what Mary was doing. Mary was encountering an awakening. She was sitting, listening, and basking in the presence of God. She was breaking all societal rules by doing so because it was not customary for women to be sitting at the feet of a teacher among the men listening. But Mary's actions showed the discipleship by breaking society's conventions in favor of loving Jesus first. Mary was willing to abandon her status, what people thought of her, and her societal roles to follow Christ. And because of this, her life was becoming anew. This weekend, we gathered here in this space. We gathered in this space to encounter Christ, to listen to the teachings of Jesus, to sit and to worship in his presence, to be made transformed and anew, to be awakened to a new calling to answer the invitation to be a part of something that was much bigger than ourselves, to abandon our fears and our worries and our mistakes and our past, and we heard the alarm sound, and we are awakened to spiritual renewal. Hearts were renewed, lives were transformed. God's call was heard here in this space. His presence was here. And through the answering of his call, we were all able to rebuild our faith, our relationships, and serve in a capacity that was far bigger than ourselves, an act of service that took all of us. So let's take a moment and just recap what happened here this weekend.
So this weekend was a weekend of mission and service, and we built 20 beds with Sleep in Heavenly Peace. Uh, we mulched the playground out here in the back, and we uh, put the hardware together for those beds that were being built in the fellowship hall. But it wasn't just a weekend of service. It was also a weekend of reconnecting, um, finding our hope and our joy in Christ again, and being able to have fellowship with one another. And so... The invitation is the same this morning. Today, that same alarm has been sounded. We've been given an invitation to answer the call of Christ, an invitation to wake up from our spiritual slumber and to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. The call from Christ is the same today as it was for Peter, for Levi, for Mary, and for Martha, to come and to follow Jesus, to love God first and to love people second, to live a life that is kingdom-minded, to become awakened spiritually to a new life. This pandemic has been awful. It's caused us all to feel isolated, disconnected, and a bit disheveled, out of place. We haven't truly felt quite the same, and we've lost our sense of connectedness to the body of Christ. And I think when we really stop to examine our lives and our hearts, then we can see all the places where it's beginning to show. We're anxious, we're tired, we're worried. We feel lost and without hope. Our joy has been robbed from our lives and we aren't sure how to recover. But church, it is time to wake up, to stop missing the alarm and start actively seeking to hear the voice of God in your lives again. It's time to re-engage, it's time to reconnect back to the body of Christ, to answer his call. We are one body with many members, and right now all of our pieces feel a bit disconnected, and it's time to reconnect. We cannot complete this mission to the world without you. We need you, we need your gifts, we need your talents, we need your faithful voices speaking back into this community of faith. We need each other because together we can impact the world for his kingdom. God is moving here at Blacksburg Baptist in incredible ways. Transformation and renewal are taking place here in this space. The alarm has been sounded. The question is, what will you choose to do today? Will you choose to continue to ignore the alarm of the call of God in your life? Will you hit snooze a few more times and find out later on that you've missed out on some really incredible things, that you've missed out on some incredible moves of the Holy Spirit here at Blacksburg Baptist? Or will you wake up, throw aside all that's hindering you, and put back on your armor of light and follow Christ on this mission to transform the world? That's the question today. That is the invitation for you to be willing to hear the voice of God in this space, hear the call that he has on your life. And so as we transition into another time of worship, I would ask that you would reflect on that. Center yourself so that you can hear the voice of God this morning and what he is calling you to. Because here at Blacksburg Baptist, we love you and we need you to continue being the light into the world. Let's pray together. Holy God, Lord, we give thanks to you for who you are. Lord, you are gracious and you are kind and you are good. And Lord, we know that each and every one of us has the same call on our lives. To follow you, to love you wholeheartedly, God, and then to love people second. Lord, to live a life that is transformed and renewed, Lord, that we would impact the world for your kingdom's sake. Lord, I pray that as we reflect on our hearts on what's holding us back, what is keeping us disconnected, Lord, that I pray that your Holy Spirit will begin to transform us, Lord. Renew us, God. Show us the things in our lives, Lord, that are keeping us away from being connected to the body. Lord, because there is a world that needs your hope, that needs your love, Lord, that needs to be shown your grace and your forgiveness. And Lord, here is the space where we find endless grace. Lord, this is the space where your presence is here, God. And we are able to be transformed and renewed, God. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would just move in our hearts, transform our minds, and, Lord, that when we leave this space, Lord, when we depart from this space, God, that we wouldn't leave the same, Lord. But, Lord, that we would leave a new person, awakened spiritually. And I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen.
first time um, being with us this morning, we would love for you to chat with us or chat with Tommy, who's over here, um, our senior pastor. We would love to hear from you. Um, if you made a decision to follow Christ today, we would love to hear from you as well. If you're visiting on the live stream, uh, we would love for you to shoot a text um, to welcome at B or email us at bbc at blacksburgbaptist.org. We are thankful that you are here. We are glad that you could be in this space with us in worship this morning. So now may the Lord bless and keep you, make his face to shine upon you, give you peace this day and every day, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 